This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we have a GE Profile refrigerator, bottom freezer, and the freezer has a bunch of ice that keeps building up at the bottom and it's leaking water out the front. So we're gonna do a little repair here. First we're gonna get all these drawers out. We're just gonna lift up these baskets. We have to do a little disassembly to the front of the freezer so we can get to the part that is causing the leak. And it's all part of a defective defrost system, but it's really easy to fix. So I'm pushing in on a, on a white plastic tab here on the left metal rail. I'm gonna push in and then pull the rail toward me. And I'll do the same thing on the right side. There's a little pla white plastic tab, you'll see it. Push in on it and then pull the metal rail out away from the freezer just a little bit and that releases those two rails. And then we're gonna pull the door and the rails out as one assembly. So we're pulling on the door and the rails, getting those guys out of there all together as one assembly. So I'm gonna pull on the rails now, keeping them symmetrical. We've got the whole door and rail assembly out and I set it off to the side. And that gives you a lot more room. I'm going to pull this basket out. You can use the video too to help you remember how to put things back. And I'm going to pull the ice bucket out. Just pull straight out. Then I'm going to get this little um, divider out. I'm going to just pull it at the bottom to the side and actually I'll pull this this one rail out too, the one on the left hand side. It has three Phillips head screws holding it in, three white screws. So just use a Phillips head screwdriver and you can spin those out. And it's just a little bit more disassembly it allows us to get to the back of the freezer to the area called the evaporator. It's hiding behind this big white sheet metal panel here in the back. We have to get in there to get a, clear some ice out of the way so we can make the defrost system work properly again. So I'm just removing those screws and I pulled out that center section. I just pulled it out at the bottom and then it just slips out. It's just in there by friction. I'm gonna push in on a tab here and then maybe I'll use a screwdriver to help me and then lift this bar out of the way. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna push in, you can use your finger or a screwdriver and then lift up on the bar. It's got two bars out. We gotta get the ice maker out of there too. So we're gonna remove two Phillips head screws or you can just loosen them maybe halfway out. And then you should be able to lift up on the ice maker to get it out of there. There we go. And then we're gonna take this uh, electrical connector for the ice maker and pull that off and get the ice maker out of there. I'm going to remove two Phillips head screws holding on the back panel, one here on the left and one right in the middle. And, and this panel is actually made of plastic, I'm sorry, it isn't sheet metal, this one's a plastic one. And I'm going to lift up with the standard head screwdriver on the corner, the middle and the other corner and that loosens up that panel. And I'm going to pull off this one rail guide, I took out the screws already so it just came right out. And then I can pull on the panel a little bit more. I'm still connected to an electrical connector here behind this panel. So I'm just going to pull this panel toward me, the whole panel, and then I'll just push it through. And now I can get the big panel out. And that's going to allow me to get to the evaporator so I can get rid of some ice that's accumulated. It's about every eight to 12 hours, there's a little heater that kicks in and it melts ice on the evaporator. And then that water drains into a trough and that drains underneath your refrigerator. And in this one, that little hole that it drains through was plugged with ice. So the ice accumulated, and now I gotta use my paint scraper to kind of break up the ice. Just take your time here, be careful that we don't hit the the silver part above it, the evaporator. It's kind of fragile. So I'm just pulling out the big chunks of the ice that I was able to get out. And in the meantime, I've been he heating some water to the boiling point. I want the water to be super hot. I'm gonna use that to melt the ice that's inside the little hole I'm using a turkey baster. So I got the boiling hot water 
and I'm squirting that down into that hole. You can see a little steam coming out. And I'm gonna to need to do that numerous times. In this case, we're not showing all of these on the video, but I think I did this cycle about 15 times. I took hot water, I shot it into that little hole, and then let it sit for about 30 seconds, and then I pulled that water out, and then I spit it into this pan, and that water's kind of lukewarm, because that water help melt some of the ice and then I do it again and it melts a little bit more of the ice in the hole and it goes deeper and deeper. That hole probably has about an inch worth of ice blocking it. So that's why it takes numerous times to finally get the water to flow. Once you get it done, you'll, you'll be able to hear the water just flow through the tube and if you keep putting water in, it doesn't pull up anymore, it disappears. And that's a good sign. That means it's flowing through that tube to a big tray underneath your refrigerator. You don't want to have a bunch of water flow. So once the water starts flowing, okay. maybe just give it one more thing of hot water. I've got a little copper piece of wire here. I took the insulation off and I bent it. And I'm gonna put this copper wire in on the heating rod and then that, that wire will go down into that hole and that'll transfer heat during the heat cycle down into that hole so that it won't ice up again. Here's a close-up picture of that copper wire bent over the heating rod, the black heating rod, and now going down into that hole, and then we won't get a reoccurrence. Now we just have to put it all back together and we're done. So thanks so much for watching and please subscribe when you get a chance.